welcome to the Reconnection Club podcast, the show that helps parents heal troubled relationships with their adult sons and daughters. I'm your host, psychotherapist Tina Gilbertson. Each week, I'll offer you compassion, clarity, and personal development tips designed to help you reconnect not only with your child, but with yourself. Now let's get started. You may have done a lot of work on personal healing to get to a place of self-compassion, compassion compassion for your child, and greater knowledge. You came to understand better than before what might have gone wrong between you to the point where your child made the decision to seek distance. After you had done a certain amount of this difficult personal work, you wrote and sent a letter of apology to your estranged adult child. Even if that apology was based on months of healing, tears, and study, and a true understanding of the issues, in other words, even if it was a great apology, a response is not guaranteed. By the way, if you ever sent an apology or letter of amends to your estranged adult child and didn't get a response, please also review episode number 87 called When You Don't Get a Response. That episode... I hope will help you ride out what is perhaps a likely outcome. You can find that episode at reconnectionclub.com slash 87. In today's episode, I'm going to list four outcomes I've seen when parents send apologies to their estranged adult children, and I'll rank them in what I'm guessing might be something like an order of likelihood. This is not based on any known research I don't believe anyone knows what the most likely response is overall, and of course the likelihood of any given outcome is going to be dependent on your own relationship history and other factors that are unique to you. But based on my conversations with many parents who've sent apology letters to their estranged adult children over the years, here's my attempt to rank the responses in order of most likely to perhaps least likely. Number one, your estranged adult child doesn't get back to you anytime soon, or at all. And even though you might have sent your message with an open heart and no conscious expectation of a reply, you will probably experience a letdown. Getting no response hurts. It's also normal And it doesn't mean the apology was bad or that the relationship is stuck in estrangement forever. A good apology does have an impact, even if you don't see it right away. Review episode number 20, What Your Child's Silence Really Means, at reconnectionclub.com slash 20, 20. You already know how much time, energy, emotion, and mental bandwidth it takes to craft a message to someone from whom you're estranged, Many estranged adult children simply don't have those resources at hand or the will to marshal them. For help resolving disappointment and other difficult feelings if you don't receive a response, please see my book, Constructive Wallowing, How to Beat Bad Feelings by Letting Yourself Have Them. So the first and perhaps most likely response is no response at all. The next two possibilities seem equally likely to me. Again, I'm just guessing. The second possibility is your child sends you something that feels like a character assassination. I've heard parents describe these as, for example, a nasty letter that tore me apart for all my flaws. If you haven't been there yourself, you can probably just imagine how that feels for the parent who receives a letter like that from their child. And if you did receive such a letter, I assume it was a deeply painful experience for you as it is for every single parent I've ever talked to who got this type of response to an apology. Most of the time, interestingly, when I've had a chance to read the adult child's words, It's quite clear to me, just as an observer, that the child is attempting to express her own pain rather than just trying to make the parent feel inadequate. But I get that it feels like an all-out personal attack on the receiving end. If you do get a negative letter in response to your apology, you'll have two things to process. First, 
some pretty awful feelings, and second, valuable information. In fact, you'll have nothing less than a blueprint for a successful reconnection project. Putting a letter like this away in a drawer and trying to forget about it is an understandable response. It's the most common reaction that I hear about. But most parents I talk to fortunately don't flat-out destroy those letters from their children. If you have received such a message, please hang on to it. You don't have to look at it if it hurts too much, but keep it somewhere where you can find it again. Or if the negative response comes as a phone call, which it sometimes does, immediately take notes about what your child said, including the words he used. And yes, I know how painful what I'm asking you to do is. Hopefully you'll thank yourself later for finding the the presence of mind, and the strength to do that, to take notes. Because there will hopefully come a time and a place where you're ready to process both the emotions and the information that came with your child's message. Working through your feelings will be the harder task, as usual. I might have more to say about this in the future on this show, but for now, let's leave it at that as a second possibility, a negative response. Understandably, this is one of the most dreaded responses, yet it does contain a silver lining of extraordinary potential value. Number three, in response to your apology, your child sends you a nice message of gratitude or forgiveness, but says he needs more time. This might be confusing. If he accepts your apology, why won't he resume the relationship? Well, there are factors in play besides whether you apologize and whether he accepts. Some influences have nothing to do with you. Keep in mind that one can't necessarily jump right back in easily. The relationship has changed, and now it needs to be managed, and maybe even rebuilt if the estrangement has been a long one. Your child may not have the time or energy due to other life commitments right now. One of the hardest aspects of this is the uncertainty for the parent surrounding next steps. No one is an expert on how to reconnect with your formerly estranged child. You'll both be treading carefully and finding your way along the path for some time. But you might want to read Carl Pilimer's book, Fault Lines, for stories of real-life reconciliations. Although Pilimer's research was not specific to adult children and their parents, and so you want to be careful with generalizing from the information in that book, you may indeed find interesting tidbits in the general picture presented in Fault Lines. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. So that's number three, a nice response that doesn't really change the level of contact. The fourth possibility of the ones I wanted to mention today is that she sends you a nice message accepting your apology and resumes contact. You let her set the pace, and she responds positively but inconsistently. The hardest thing about this scenario is, again, the uncertainty. You may desire more regular, more predictable contact than your adult child or children can provide. Adult children may be more likely than their parents to have to fit contact into complicated work and family schedules. So even in the case where your formerly estranged adult child throws open her arms, the quality and quantity of contact may not resume at the levels you desire. The challenge in every one of those four scenarios is to be compassionate and gentle with your own emotional needs, taking responsibility to make sure they're adequately met during what can be a stressful time after you send an apology. I'll list those possible responses I mentioned one more time. Number one is no response. Number two, a negative response, which can be incredibly painful and also useful if it's processed well. Number three, a positive response followed by continued silence. And number four, a positive response and a resumption of the relationship in some form. 
There may be other possibilities, but those are the big four that parents report to me inside the Reconnection Club and in private consultations. I've tried to list them in the order in which I believe I hear about them, with the second and third being about equal, but do take these rankings with a big grain of salt because they are purely observational and from memory alone. Common sense tells us, though, that apologies, while often important and appropriate in relationships, are not magic bullets. Most apologies don't stop estrangement and return relationships to normal overnight, even if those apologies are really good. But bear this in mind. If you do send a good apology with a firm basis in your own healing and your understanding of the real issues from your child's point of view, your words do have an impact. Every possibility I mentioned today, even the negative response, is a potential win. Not just a win for you, but for your child and for the relationship you share. Until next time, remember that you are a loving, lovable, and still growing human being. So please take good care of yourself. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Reconnection Club podcast, I invite you to check out ReconnectionClub.com. The Reconnection Club is for parents at any stage of estrangement from their adult, child, or children. So whether you've just realized there's trouble between you, you've been living with estrangement for years, or you're newly reconciled but still walking on eggshells, the Reconnection Club is your essential resource for information, support, and continued personal growth. With our courses and workshops, expert interviews, monthly Q&A calls, and a friendly, active community, the Reconnection Club is a wonderful place to be for anyone suffering the pain of estrangement from an adult, child, or children. So check it out at ReconnectionClub.com.